The Cairngorms National Park Authority is restoring peatlands to combat climate change, carbon emissions and protect the carbon that's stored in these habitats, as well as you know, look after the plants and animals that live here. I'm Stephen Corcoran. I'm the Peatland Action Programme Manager for the Cairngorms National Park Authority. And today we're in the heart of the Cairngorms National Park on Glenfeshi Estate, which is part of Wildland Limited. And this site we're on is at nearly 850 metres, so it's one of our highest sites for peatland restoration, possibly one of the highest sites for restoration work in the UK. And today we're looking at an area that was being treated. Um, it was a, a large peat pan. This was all bare peat behind us here <coughs> due to erosion. And we treated this with um, a, what we call a mulch. It's made from you know, heather and grass and sphagnum and mosses. And we spread this mulch over the, the bare peat. Uh, and then the mulch then eventually starts to, to grow. And we can see already there's greenery starting to form. These are feather moss, a type of moss that's growing back. And we also got bits of sphagnum and cotton grass and sedges and uh, some heather is all coming back. These bare peat areas we're on now are very hostile um, areas for plants to grow. And it's very dry. This uh, peat is all desiccated and dried out and this will just blow away or the rain will wash it away. And you know, the, the pH of this, it's like um, cider vinegar or grapefruit. So it's how acidic it is. So it's very hostile, very difficult for plants to grow. This is an area that's just been spread with mulch and as you can see it's really quite thick. It's uh, made up of sphagnum and grasses and heathers and mosses and the machine spreads it and that carpets the bare peat protecting it from frost and keeping it very moist and then plants will start to grow on the top of this uh, mulch surface. One of the key things we've learnt is that we used to spread the mulch very thin and it just blew away or dried out and didn't work. So we're spreading this really thickly um, because this is such a hostile area to, to plants to grow. We have snow and rain and frost all the time and this thick surface seems to be much more effective. We're looking at the cut bags of mulch and this whole mulching technique has been developed by the contractors Barker and Bland who are working on the site and they took it from work that was done in Canada and also the Pennines and down in England. And so this is the cut material. See, it's just full of mosses. There's a lot of moss in here and uh, brash of heather and grasses. So one of our key ingredients in our mulch mix that we're looking after is feather moss that can be a, a hylocolium or um, a pleurisia type of moss. And that's the the key moss that grows on the top of the mulch and then other plants can then grow on top of that that moss structure and the other key moss we're after is sphagnum this is a um, this is the key component of peat sphagnum forms peat and we're looking to get as much sphagnum back in our sites as possible so they can then start forming peat again so over here we've been taking donor material you saw the digger loading up the turfs onto the machine and then the, the borrow pits that are left behind are very carefully filled in and stretched in with material so that um, we've sort of restored that area we've borrowed material from and, and, that, and those holes then disappear over time as things grow back in again. One of the many benefits to the peatland restoration work is you know restoring the bog so that they hold carbon but other benefits are things like pool creation behind us. You can see how the succession of buns down this gully has created lots of pools. And you know, several gamekeepers have said to me, these pools are very attractive to red grouse during periods of drought um, as places to drink and also to take chicks where there's invertebrates. Um, so the other big benefit on sites like this where we can create lots of pools is uh, they're colonized by dragonflies almost immediately. And you, sites like this can support maybe six or seven different species of dragonflies. And we can increase the number of pools by a hundred times almost by this sort of work. This work is funded by Peatland Action. And that money comes from the Scottish Government as part of the climate change mitigation work. 
and we're, we're here on wild land and they're also providing funding for the project and the, the overall program is being project managed by the Kangaroos National Park Authority's peatland team and then the contractors working on the site are Barker and Bland from Cumbria.